Friday nights during the fall. Six-man fans gather to watch a sermon of grit and determination be delivered by six men, 10 minutes at a time, four quarters a night. Here you'll find the quarterback, but also the linebacker and the kicker. Where iron sharpens iron, where hard work pays off, and where six are one. Now for your host of Six is One, Coach Goldman. Welcome back to Six is One. Uh, this week we have Coach Saudi with San Antonio Jubilee. Unfortunately, uh, the audio portion of, of the interview, the first uh, half, uh, had some technical difficulties, so we'll have to try to get with Coach Saudi again. But we do have the video portion. So we are going to go ahead and put up the video portion where we break down some film. Uh, a little backstory on Coach Saudi. Uh, he is from across the pond, so to speak, uh, from England. Uh, been in the States for over a decade now. Played football uh, in uh, an American football, not soccer, uh, over in uh, England. Had a lot of success at all levels. Uh, won state ti uh, title, the equivalent of like their state title at the high school level. Won again uh, another national title uh, at the collegiate level. And then it was part of a, ten, uh, a semi-pro team that they had that uh, won a championship over there as well. So uh, a sort of a seasoned player who has turned coach. Uh, he's uh, taken up at uh, San Antonio Jubilee, which is a charter school, has uh, numerous campuses, but this is their first year to have football. And he's worked hard to get a six-man football program started and in you know, I look forward to having that interview in its entirety. The the, the you know at another time, but I didn't want to hold up uh, our ability to at least go through the X's and O's with Coach Saudi. It's, it's kind of a unique opportunity as he's about three games into his uh, inaugural season as both a coach, a six-man coach, uh, uh, here in Texas. So without further ado, we'll now put you on with uh, the second part of the program, which is where we go through film. God bless. Welcome back to Six is One. This is the video portion where Coach Saudi and I go over a little bit of film. Uh, you know, for Coach, he has his program's new, so he's got two films he gets to choose between, right? Uh, so we're going to go with one from uh, a game, I guess. Was this last week Coach, with Bracken, Coach? Uh, this was Friday. This week. Okay, Friday this was past week. All right. Um, you know, it's nice to know that that uh, and so we have the pro T from uh, from Bracken. Uh, that looks like so they got some pretty good sized dudes as well. Um, so now, Coach, give us a little bit about your. You got two guys with a hand on the ground, and then you're 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 going to be. You know, I guess you're stacking your backers behind behind these guys. Yeah. So for this game, we were trying to take away the run as best we could from Bracken. So we stacked up our linebackers behind our DNs and we just slanted the DN, uh, the D line every time. So the D line slanted left, the linebackers would shoot right and basically run blitz slash blitz on every play when we did it. So we were trying to like stuff up the middle and then we had our corners. They were looking, if the play went away from them, they were looking for the first man out, which would be either the end or the back. And if the play came towards them, they were supposed to come up field and uh, try and contain and kind of squeeze that gap down to try and force it back inside to the, the linebackers who would be flowing off the redirection. Gotcha. So you're trying to bring this guy basically up if you had a, if you had a sweep. If you know they're running their standard 26 sweep where they just turn and, and spin, and you're trying to bring a corner you know a corner up for run support, slanting everybody, um, you know through the gaps yeah. and then shooting so, the backers. So you have, you have, you have, you're kind of in a four two that almost bites down into a five one if you're bringing the corner up. Um, yes. So you mean if they ran that way, it would become a five-one, yeah. Okay. So the idea would be that the backs, the uh, linebackers would be shooting through. So when the QB does the pitch and like goes around to block, they technically should have been past him before he got to make his block. But obviously on this play, well, they threw the center. That's the play right up the middle. They throw the center right up the middle, and yeah, that was, that's yeah. the one position we didn't account for at all in any of our game planning on the catch. Like if he catches it, then like we're just gonna have to hold our hands up to that one. Yeah, and he did on the first play, so <laughs> nice job, Coach Shirley. So on this one, you'll see our cornerback instead of attacking, he steps back. Obviously, we're on goal line, so yeah, he should he should be getting upfield. You'll see the the linebacker the shot. He actually gets double teamed by yeah the 
fullback and the, the QB, and it's just an easy walk in for. Yeah. Six. So they're they're basically gonna just get yeah. this guy down. That guy's already yeah. taking himself out of the play because he didn't squeeze down. Yeah, the DN shoots inside. He's shooting into the A gaps. Yeah, he's the going back the gap, but he gets met by the fullback and the quarterback, so he doesn't really have much of a chance on that. Yeah. Uh, no, but I know it's supposedly kickers for people too, but we don't care. Uh, <laughs> and I got a good kicker. He probably, hopefully, he's not listening to this. <laughs> Love my kicker, really. <laughs> right, you can make out to him, All right, so you're bringing a guy in motion, uh, and you're under center, but with with three on the line. Yeah, so we're on the jet sweep. Yeah, motion. So obviously we have two plays off of this straight away. You have the jet sweep or the, the dive coming off the other side of it. So like oh. I said, it's start try and keep it simple and have two plays that look exactly the same. So we don't have to do too much thinking when we're out there. Right now, but what it does also is it doesn't put the quarterback in as a blocker. That's kind of the, yeah, that's the, the trade off. We're kind of hoping that the jet motion pulls the, uh, the end away. Right. So he's trying to contain. So, he kind of doesn't shoot inside so hard, and it kind of leaves a gap for the. Uh, you'll see on that play, there's a little slight gap for the yeah. fullback to dive through. Yeah. So you have. Let me get to. And we're, your kick out. So you're going to kick out the end with the block. You're going to block. Kicking out with the end. You know, yeah. These guys shoot the they gap. Line up. If they line up outside like that. And the the uh, nose tackles in the other a gap, then yeah, that the that lineman will kick out and follow it around because the hole just opens naturally at that point. So here you go. This is you're going to come back. You're cracking with this guy. Uh, mm -hmm. You're pulling a guard. I'm guessing. Yes. Or is that the center? Is that the center pulling or? That's the right guard. Okay. So you pull the guard. You're going to crack here, and this guy. I'm guessing he's coming to get the corner. Yes, although the problem we had here is that we should have been cracking at the end because the end obviously comes up and extends the play too much. Right. And we don't, we're not able to get north south in time, right? So we didn't adjust to that, unfortunately. That's that's something we should have changed and just had the guard block yeah. up, yeah. Just have this guy block to the next to the backer and let this guy yeah. uh, crack the end, exactly. And yeah. just leave our back one on one with the corner, which he's yeah. real quick, slippery, would have been. It'd been a good good chance for him. Yeah. Well, and that's oftentimes what, you know, offenses are is, is to say, well, my goal is, you know, obviously and it's the same as Levin, to exploit the matchups, right? So if I can get my my best guy on, on your second or third best guy, then that's we'll take that every time. Or maybe my you know, if you only go one or two deep with speed and I go three deep with speed, then my third guy goes against your you know, it's whatever I can get. Uh you know, yeah, to, that's exactly what we're looking for. Just trying to set our speed guys up and just have some space to make some moves. And now, here they are in a trips or our twins, pardon me, twins in, the, in a spread formation. So, what are you telling your defensive ends here? Are you sending two? Are you sending one? What do you, what do you, what's your thought process here? So we, when we see this formation, we generally don't want to be in, in this defensive set. We want to have one down lineman and have three linebackers. So, we got caught out in the substitutions on this one. But uh, on, on this point here, one of the guys will just rush straight up. The other guy will kind of read the um, – well, we when they line up in this formation, Bracken generally tend to run the sweep left behind 11. 11 will crack down inside, and they'll try to kind of get outside to the left. So we knew that coming in. But at this point, my linebacker over here doesn't kind of extend a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, that we end up getting t caught inside on it. Yeah. And so now you – still a good tackle from the backside. Yeah, that's – I mean, that's exactly what the idea was. He shoots up, forces it back inside, and then we have the, the uh, pursuit inside on the play. So he, he does a good job on that one for us. Well, and you're getting some penetration here, you know, slanting your guys through the gaps. So – and you've got them both coming up here. Um, yeah, um, actually, this should be – we should have had a sack here my – my Mike linebacker steams straight through and runs right past the quarterback. Beat a got upfield yeah. shoulder. That's a sack right there. But again, it's yeah. just one of those things where we're just kind of learning, learning the game, learning position. So right. we'll take that one right place that time. So 
we'll take that. All right, so we're we're in motion again. Just your jet sweep and the dive. Just yeah, hard. It was a bit of a bad read. I mean, breaking out to the right, there was a lot more space for him to kind of get one on one with the, uh, the safety that's coming up. Right. But uh, he takes off the left. So I mean, again, he's he's a sophomore, first year playing football. So yeah, all, I always think that there's there's gold at the end of the rainbow on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, if if I had a penny for every piece of gold that's at that rainbow, I'd be a very wealthy man. <laughs> Right, you mean every other coach out there? Yeah. Um, so on this one here, it looks like you you got you got two guys pulling. They're just a little they're a little deep, I guess. So the the quarterbacks the the quarterback pitches out and tries to get around as well. Like I said, the problem we had is we the, the DN is just shooting up field real quick. Yeah, he's a good athlete and he redirects pretty quick too. So he's able to stretch that play to the sideline. Ideally, we'd want to get up inside that hash mark really to start going north right there. So he does a great job extending it from inside out and then forces us to the sideline. Now, I mean, you're, did you try to, well, okay, here. So this is a diamond, typical diamond. Yeah. Huh. Like I said, we have two formations. We have that jet formation and then we have the diamond formation. Okay. Now, do you, that was a direct snap. I take it to the, to the queue. It wasn't supposed to be. And like I said, this okay. is one of, one of the issues have with like i say under the friday night lights a lot of our guys just we have a lot of brain farts so you'll see there's obviously direct snap on this play and then i think in the next play we have a punt that we're missing our up back who doesn't go out for the punt so they end up getting a hand on this too so i mean it's like it's little procedural things like this that we've tried to drill this throughout the day wednesday and thursday and they had it down as soon as we got to Friday night and the lights were on, all of a sudden we don't know where we're supposed to be again. So, <laughs> right, I get, so. I get you. Well, it's it's you know, you're trying to you're trying to do your best. So now I'm going to ask you a question about. So early on, you got a hand on the ground. You know, here this this player doesn't. So do you want a hand on the ground, or you know, a lot of people in six man will keep them standing up. Some will insist upon a hand on the ground. What's your thought process on? Um, he should have had his hand on the ground there. I mean, we do we teach the linemen to go from a three point, um, especially in this when there's the two front like here, because they're going to be shooting hard. I want I like it because it keeps them low. But most guys, especially at this level, tend to stand upright and right. just get thrown down because they've got no leverage. So at least if they start with their hand down. They've got further to go before they're out of position. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, yeah, we when we have somebody in the middle, we we put a hand on the ground as well. Um, uh, we will flex ends on the outside just simply because well, we play with the ends, um, um, and we will let one of our we'll let our backer. We've got a bouncing back. We call him a bouncing backer, kind of your mic back. Just he goes all over the place. We're gonna bring him, you know. Yeah, the part of it's just try to confuse. You know, I always think at this level. You have you can do a lot more in confusing people, right? Uh, yeah. When you're on the defensive side of the ball, if they see the same thing every time. Even the not brightest of them will finally figure out how to block it. <laughs> may take you know may take them a few more plays, but yeah, exactly. I think that's uh, that's so one of the issues we we had in our first game is we didn't again we didn't really have any plays defensively. We just had alignments because we wanted to just try and put them in the best position. Just kind of let them flow to the ball, but uh, that ended up killing us on that one too. So, so you you got them here, you got them coming. You actually were slanting that way. You got a, your backer coming. This two's releasing, so you got this guy. I'm sure covering there. Yeah. Uh, and this is a pass play. He rolls yeah. Again, out. Our, um, the 24, my mic backer, he shoots straight through and runs right past the quarterback. Yeah. If he goes up field shoulder, follows him around, then that's another sack right there. So yeah, yeah. Again, that's one of those things where we're going to learn that one more time seeing it. We're going to well, get that play down the line. Actually, you you know the good news was your guy saw him and picked him up coming out of the backfield. That's just a good pa pass and a good catch. I mean that you know even if he's a two steps closer, I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's just going to be hard yeah, to defend. I mean that is out there and it makes a nice grab over the top. So I mean it. 
like I said, sometimes people, offense is going to make a play. Like it's going to happen. You just kind of yeah, get your hand up to a good play sometimes. You want to just try and limit them though. Right. So here again, you've got um, it's just your standard dive. So you, everybody's coming up. You got the backer coming through, and this time does get hands on him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right. So that's that's essentially how it should have worked for us for for a lot of the game. Well, and, and it, yeah, when you can get that kind of penetration, yeah. Precisely, that's what we're just shooting for, just trying to like run blitz every time, just try and get some guys in the backfield to cause some problems. In this play, you see my cornerback, his first step is backwards. Backwards, yeah. He, he should have read that running back on the on the, uh, the right side of the line. He should have read him coming at him, and he should have gone straight upfield to try and... Yeah, instead, he's kind of moving sideways or... Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, this is a play we're gonna have to talk about in film tomorrow because he does a lot of backpedaling here for no, no real reason, and obviously that gives him the entire sideline, which, as you know, in yeah. six minutes, you can't really afford to give that up. So yeah, now that's and the and the backer on this one, this is one of those things too, where he, his angle. That's the play before. No, no, that's the same, his... same play. Yeah, his angle. If he just – and this is what I always tell my guys when we when we blitz, and I, I got – well, you know, I always got one that thinks he's faster than he really is, right? Um, yeah. yeah, but, you know, I try to remind them that the guy getting the ball on the other side is moving forward, and you're running – you know, at the same speed you're going the other direction, you're going to – the goal is not to run past him, right? Um, so it's like your backer here, you can tell – He's he's seeing a tackle right here, right? That's what he's seeing in his head. I guarantee it. I mean, I've I've been inside this mind of a 17 year old male. It's not pretty, but I guarantee you that's what he's what what, what he's thinking. And um, and what he needs to be thinking is I'm going to make the play right about here, right? Yeah, I get that. yeah. So so you know it's the old duck hunting analogy. You know this it's aim, you know three four five feet in front, depending on how fast that duck's going, how far away they are. Um, but that's, that's what I would tell you. Cause that guy has, I mean, he's unblocked. The queue is not going to see him in time. I mean, no. And that was, that was what we were planning for was the fact that he'd get upfield so quick that QB wouldn't be able to look around. And, to well, and even if he did, he'd clip him, you know? So, you know, so if he takes the, the, the run inside the queue here, you know, stays flatter, the best case scenario for the queue after making that pitch is to push him in the back. Right. I mean, which isn't, uh, shouldn't do right so because you can throw the flag but instead you know now you're just chasing it from the backside but i would i would say that you know those linebackers if they if they thought just a little bit more about you know that's what we do with ours just quit running past you know i get it you know but yeah. he's running too and he's an athlete so let's all act like we're athletes out here <laughs> like I mean, a lot of it's just being able to read the flow like if you see everyone moving a certain way and you're running through like you kind of got to start directing that way and uh right yeah and i think that's instinctual to someone's played the game a lot like I said this is his, his first year playing tackle football i think so, well he played black football for us last year so so you got about a three or four yard snap here on the uh from the from the center on your diamond any reason it's not deeper um mostly just because we're it's the guy's first time playing center, so we're kind of just trying to make it easier for him to make sure we can get the snap there. Ah, okay. Well, that's that's fair enough. Um, it just you know, in terms of the you know, most people will make that anywhere from you know five six yards back. Some even seven. Yeah, that makes it hard for the up backs to turn pitch it and then make the block offers because by that time the the line is on top of them a lot of times. So yeah. yeah. I mean, we're kind of deviling deep blue sea at that point. It's like, do we risk the snap being off or to try and make sure we get a block or do we secure the ball and then try and rally from there? So now a lot of it's, all we it, deal with is picking up our poison here. Right. Well, here's one here. So this guy's coming after this end, this defensive end, and he mm -hmm. goes ahead and he, you know, he hits him up top. Now, do you ever coach the, the cut here? Because it's legal at this point. Because he's inside the, the tackle zone, hitting the end inside the tackle zone. And because you are really close to the line of scrimmage, I mean, you know, you're not extending it out. Uh, I mean, it, is no, that something? Teach shot blocks right now. I mean, like I said, our guys are so brand new. We're just trying to teach them. Basic just, blocking. Yeah, just 
lock on drive. I mean, the problem he had on that play was he just popped him and just fell off him. He should have hit, extended his arms, got inside his breastplate, yeah. and drove him. That way, we'd have had a cutback option off it if he, the guy didn't get outside. But instead, he hits him and releases him, lets him run on. So, but yeah, well, no problem. I can see a little bit of adjustment. Your corners are a little closer up now at this point in the game. So, yeah, they, I mean, they kind of, they did that on their own. They're supposed to be at four and four. I didn't want to change them just because I felt like if it gets them up there and makes means they're going to come up field a bit more, then I'm yeah. okay with that. Because at this point, we were just getting gashed by the run. So, yeah, well, and here, in here, you know, yeah, they're basically not even going to block this guy. Yes, so he actually, on this play, he has a chance to make it. He just misses the tackle. Yeah. yeah. And that's essentially, we should have had that pretty much on every time they ran that play. We should have had that. And you'll see, I mean, I don't know if we'll get to it, but later on in the game, we have a different guy in at that position, and he starts making a few of those tackles. He misses well, them too. But and this guy here, stop. you know, what I always tell folks, our guys, is, look, I know you're thinking this, you know, that, that your job here is to make a tackle. And I always tell folks it's never your job to make a tackle. It's your job to, you know, do your job, which would be if he does stay flat and doesn't turn his body sideways, you know, takes on this blocker and stays flat, then the back would not have a one plant and go, right? And explode. Yeah. And, go, uh, and that would have given the, the outside unblocked guy, unblocked guy an opportunity to close because that yeah, half second – that this guy has to hesitate to find out where the hole is. Because when you get turned sideways, right, this guy's going to get turned sideways. He's turned already. No chance. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's something we've, we've got to work on some more is just how to take on blocks. A lot of times, I mean, in the last game, this is already improvement from the last game. Because in the last game, he was trying to, like, duke around blocks, which obviously makes a huge hole every time yeah. you do that. So this time, at least he was taking them on. But we can't, we're still working on how to, like, get into the hole, plant yourself there and like be able to shed the block at, at the right time. So that, I mean, that's something that will definitely improve over the season. And both of my linebackers, 24 and 25, are some of my hardest working kids. So I'm very confident we'll get that with them soon. Well, so it looks like you're going to hand this one. Yeah, yeah, this is a little counter we have going back the other way. But obviously, we hadn't run that yet, but they they played heads up football and sort of have got it. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing the um, most times when we see the counter, it's it's straight up because you, you because and it works effectively typically when your ends come too fast, right? Yeah. So, so when those ends are too fast up the field, um, so if you go lateral, you're going to end up kind of running into them. But if you if you go up straight up, and because you you think you your guy can beat the backer, right? He's quick. Yeah, it's definitely something we need to adjust to as we go. I mean, we've we've seen multiple different looks. Everyone defends this diamond differently, and it's been yeah. The challenge trying to like get our guys to one like know the plays in the first place, and then two understand who they should be picking up at this point. Like, because at first we had our center trying to pick up the on rushing end, which obviously he's got no chance of getting because they line up two yards outside of him with his head down. So, like, they're just things that we're gonna pick up with experience yeah Again, this, this is another job well done from those guys yeah play by the end full, uh, scrapes along the line and makes the tackle it's the way it should be yeah That's he's like, closing you know i would tell probably 55 you might want to catch i don't know his speed yet but you're probably a little too deep you know, this yeah, is, I, mean, I, I have this problem with my young guys i'm like Look, they, they, they do this crazy thing. They give the ball to the, one of the fastest guys on their team. Don't know why they do that. But, you know, you want to give yourself a chance, come down the line, right? You know, don't don't try to chase him from behind. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, I think it's, we've had the same problem with a lot of our guys. Like, they'll once they get through, like, they just run it through, and then they'll suddenly they realize they have to redirect towards where the play's gone. So, yeah. again, he didn't follow the flow of the play and ended up being out of position. Oh, there's a flag. Okay, good. They got it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we did too bad against this play. We just missed some tackles at the end. Yeah, and in the end, that's that's just experience. I mean, so there you go. Gets off the block, closes well. There you go. Both of them close well to the ball. Yeah. yeah so this is how we wanted to, to defend this play. Obviously, we knew about 
they like to crack 11 in on the side. So we were trying to force it. We had our linebacker that side was supposed to be playing force. but Yeah, and that's what you want to give up on that play. I mean, that's a good example of what you want to give up. Just go ahead and let them take a chunk, you know, throw it deep. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, lowest percentage play they're going to get out of that one for us. Yeah. So we'll take yeah, take that. That's not a bad. Yeah, and actually, that, pretty good throw, it. all things considered. But there you go. Ah. Uh, yeah, and you see on that play, the guy does the right thing, yeah. but he just misses, completely misses the play. Like, yeah, squeezes it, comes up quick, gets outside, and then just puts his head down at last minute and yeah. goes inside for some reason. So yeah, that's that's always never good. So yeah, no good good recovery there. Yeah, this is there. You go. That's a good play. I had the fact, that my guy, my guys would have never been looking for a pass on that. And I guarantee you, Strider called that because nobody ever thinks of a pass when it's first and goal from the three. Well, he did what he was supposed to do. He read the, he read the side yeah. of the line. He saw no, no one see him. Yeah. He gets inside. I'm like, that's a great heads up play from him. He's a, he's an instinctive player. I think the, um, we're just giving him a lot to think about right now. So he has a bit of a rough game, but he has a lot of talent that we can hopefully nurture and make, get him somewhere with it. Unfortunately, we go right back the other way and give it back to him now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's painful. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, Coach, I, I would tell you that uh, you've got, you know, from what I can tell too, you've got some talent out there. Like you said, they just have to figure out what the what the system is and learn and um you know it's 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 difficult like but you know you got like you said 25 right uh 25 squad yeah yeah 25 on the squad how many of them are seniors uh four yeah so you got a lot to work with um you know to a lot to build upon and uh full disclosure you know i invited coach on simply because we're gonna be playing later this year and i want to make sure that you know i, I had all of his game plan down by <laughs> Uh, no, we're pretty, like I said earlier, we try and have one formation and we can run four or five different plays out of the same look and it makes it easy for our guys to memorize and yeah. you guys to run. Well, we're not much different. You know, our, our, um, uh, uh, everybody that's ever played us knows we run the O'Brien. That's all we, you know, their people have said, do you do anything else? I'm like, yeah, we've got other things. We got to keep these guys at least somewhat excited in practice, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, have your, you have to have your plays that you know inside out, and you can lean on when time comes. Yeah, and that's that's what we're trying to get to. Is just, I mean, like I said, for us, we're just trying to build this thing brick by brick. And the first part for us was, I mean, in our first game against Feast, we didn't like have the right defensive alignment for the first twelve plays. People were out of position. That obviously killed us. And this in this game, we tried to fix that, and we did that. If, uh, offensively, we didn't execute the play correctly for the first eight plays against Beast. So we're definitely like those mistakes were kind of lessened a little bit and improved a little bit this time around. So obviously as we go on through the season, we hope to get that down to a point where we're not making any mistakes and we're actually able to try and execute the play the way it's drawn up and hopefully see some better results. Yeah. Well uh you know so who do you have next coach? You got a game this week? Uh, Yes, we are playing Dimebox. They're a new program as well. So they're visiting us for our first home game of the year. So it's an exciting one for us. Our kids are really excited for this. I didn't know Dimebox had a football program. Okay. Yeah, first year for Coach Frey over there. He's been pretty successful. Man. I mean, I know they were, they'd were they won two already going into this week. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Really? Yeah. They're just down the road from us. Okay. Yeah. Well, Good. Cool. All the best getting prepared for that this week, Coach. We thank you very much for your time. Look forward to meeting you in person later on this year when we come your way. Uh, so I, I know that's a long time out, it seems like, from now. But uh, uh, 18th of October, I believe. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, Coach. That's actually going to be our homecoming day. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So we'll, we'll uh, we're looking forward to it. Now you play uh, on your field out there. Do you have a? You're not like Achieve. You don't have your own big megaplex stadium. I mean, not every charter school has this. Have you seen what they no. have? No, we, we definitely don't. I know Achieve and <laughs> have these real nice stadiums. We don't. Um, like I said, we bought the uh, the old Casa School, which is on the east. Yeah. By the San Antonio. So they have a they have a pretty nice field out there. So we're going to play our home games at that field. Okay. School, it's grass, stuff. right, Coach? Yes, it's grass. All right, there you go. It's the way God meant for football to be played. Just putting that out there. But anyway. Those <laughs> <laughs> look real nice, but this is definitely a grass field for us. Yeah, I hear you don't have to water those uh, artificial fields nearly as much, too. From That's what they're telling me. Uh, <laughs> you market one and it's done for life. So that's definitely yeah. a bad well, thank you very much for taking some time uh, on the in the evening to to go over uh, and speak with us. We truly appreciate it, and uh, look forward again to meeting you this uh, later on this fall. And keep doing, uh, uh, keep plugging away and getting better each week. My pleasure, coach. I appreciate you having me on. All right. So, those of you, thank you very much. I've been told to ask you to remember to like, share, uh, spread the word. Uh, when you go to YouTube, if you look for Coach G or uh, Six is One, uh, you should find our videos. We truly appreciate the patronage and uh, the support and uh, look forward. We've got some other uh, great coaches coming up. We've got, uh, uh, I think, Milford, Borden County uh, on the public school side. We've got an interview with Coach Helm coming up. Uh, a lot of good stuff ahead uh, for, the, for the remainder of the football season. So thanks to everybody, and y'all have a wonderful evening, and God bless.